I'm Jill Foster and welcome to your next PB&J card class. Today I'll be creating a set of three tags using Penny Black brush stroke stamps, as well as a few of my favorite Penny Black backgrounds. And here's a look at those three tags. These tags can be created following a few simple steps. To begin with, we will want to do some stamping with markers, and I love to use the Faber Castell Stampers Big Brush Markers with the Penny Black Brush Stroke Stamps. So you'll see here I'm just taking that marker and I'm quickly coloring right onto the image where I want that color to be. These are an India ink marker, so you do have to work quickly because they are permanent once dry. So I'll get the stems there with the green. I'm going to very lightly mist this with water and then stamp straight down onto my tag. I'll follow the same procedure with the next two stamps. So I'm coloring onto the stamp. And the nib of the markers is very sturdy, so you, I kind of just turn it to the side and color with that nib adding the green for the stems, a light mist with water, and stamp straight down. And I love that you can kind of mix some of the colors. For example, on the flowers, I used a couple of colors of blue and purple. And if you get any transfer onto your marker, just color it onto a scratch sheet in that um, till your nib colors clean. So here I'm starting with the stems and just a touch of brown at the top. And I'll list the exact marker colors used at the end of the video. Okay, and our third tag has been stamped. The next step would be to add some shading with colored pencils. So once that has dried, I'm going to go in with the Faber Castell Art Grip colored pencils, and I'm just going to add some shading right on top of the marker. And these products are designed to mix and match together, so your colors will match. So when you grab the pink, it will match the pink of the marker. And I'm just adding that right on top. And I love in the end how this gives us an almost hand-drawn look or painted look using these brush stroke stamps. And I'll do the same here with the orange. Just adding a little extra shading, darkening it up a little bit near the mainly the base of the flower. And then I'm also going to do that on the stems. So I'm taking just a little bit darker green. And then a second color of green to darken it up just a little bit more. So I'd continue to do that on the other two tags. Now the third step in creating these is to ink the backgrounds. So in this tag, I'm using antique linen, starting off of the edge and working my way on, and I'm going up to the flower images. I want to leave some of a white glow behind them, so I'm trying not to go too much over the stamped and colored image. On the next tag, I'm using scattered straw distress ink. And for all of these tags, I'm using the ink blending tool with the foam applicator pad. You can see again, I left that white glow sort of behind the flowers. And then on this final tag, I'm using tumbled glass distressing, following the same procedure, starting off of the edge and working my way on in a circular motion. Alright, and we're ready now for step four, which would be the background stamping. 
So on this first background stamp, I'm going to use the Versamagic ink in the color of Aquatic Splash. And I chose the Versamagic ink because this background stamp has a lot of solid area. So I wanted that to have a nice soft look. And these inks work really well. Now I wanted to show you here a way to kind of protect your image if you're, background, if you're stamping on the background. Um, normally I just uh, dab off the ink with a baby wipe and hope that it doesn't get on the image. But if you're really concerned about that, you can lay down um, a piece of paper to protect your image. So I just wanted to show you that there. I'm actually going to do some more stamping um, without that piece at the end, but that is a technique you can try if you're worried about your image getting stamped on. You can see how that that ink creates such a nice soft look on the background. And here each time I'm re-inking and then um, dabbing some off with the baby wipe. And you'll see that I sort of turn that stamp like I'm about to stamp it and it helps me to see where I need to dab off the ink because it is the reverse when you turn it over to stamp it onto the tag. So again I'm inking, dabbing some off with a baby wipe and then stamping straight down. And I really wanted this to have sort of a um, vintage, sort of messy look. So I am sort of turning the stamp each time as I stamp it um, so that it's not perfectly uniform. I'm going to just put a little bit up here. And then because that is the Versa Magic ink, I can rub some of that off with my fingertip. Now again, this stamp, background stamp by Penny Black, has a lot of solid area. So I'm using the Versamagic ink again. This is in the color of Thatched Straw. And this will create a really soft, subtle background, stamping it onto that color of Distress Ink um, Scattered Straw that we already put on the tag. So I've applied the ink and I'm rubbing off some areas with the baby wipe. I'll lay my tag on top, hold with one hand, and rub with the other. And you could lay a piece of scratch paper on top here to protect it if you wanted. And there you can see that really subtle background. Now this background stamp has more finer has finer detail to it, so I wasn't as concerned about using uh, Versa Magic ink, so I used Distress Ink in the color of Crushed Olive and stamped it right onto the tag. So here's another look at those three tags. I've just embellished those using um, some paper torn out of an old book that was inked with tea dye Distress Ink and some punches and die cuts. Thanks so much for watching. For details and more information, visit www.pennyblackink.com and here is a list of the supplies used.